Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. Record sales, vinyl hits a 25 year high after the deaths of many music greats and a trend for returning to tangible music. Iran's symphony orchestra sing in French for the first time in a decade. and the treasures of Islam in Africa, from Timbuktu to Zanzibar at the Arab World Institute in Paris. The David Bowie vaults are being opened up with two new records of unreleased material out this week. Cracked Actor and Bow Promo are limited editions for the 10th anniversary of Record Store Day. It comes as part of the Vinyl Revival. It's thanks to the rise of global hipsterism and a desire to switch from the cold perfection of digital music to the warmth and occasional defects of a record player's needle. Alexander Hurst reports now. Vinyl has always had its enthusiasts. The curious, the converts, those who never gave it up. They can spend hours searching for discs, all in the pursuit of the unique sound that a record player gives. There is a particular type of sound that you get, a graininess, a physicality. We can hold them, we can feel them. That's what we're looking for. It's physical. There's the whole album aspect, you open it up, and there are lyrics there. So it's also about the object itself. And the objects are selling well. Vinyls were on the verge of disappearing, and now boutiques devoted to them, like this one, are opening in cities around the world. First it was a trend, but now it's a mass phenomenon. Everyone is buying vinyl because it's an experience to go home, move a needle to the record and listen to an album. A second wind that's whooshing through the music industry. This is one of two factories in France that makes vinyl records. The process hasn't changed since the 1950s. Plastic gets heated and then pressed to a mold for 30 seconds and it's done. The business employs 50 people. In 2000, the market had bottomed out. We had our lowest sales ever, and this factory was only making a few hundred thousand discs per year. And now, for 2017, our production target is 15 million discs. The French vinyl is eventually destined for export to the United States and Japan. The records are still just a fraction of total music sales. At $1 billion last year, they are at a three-decade high and growing rapidly. The desert blues of North Africa's Touareg people is often dubbed rebel music. Capturing the sounds of the Sahara, the Malian band Tammy Crest sing of resistance despite the conflict that's rocked their homeland. They've just released their fourth studio album, Kiddle, and are on tour around Europe. Rochelle Harrison Pless went to meet them in Paris. Hypnotic sounds, deep, slow burning grooves that speak of both suffering and rebellion. Tamikrest are a desert blues band hailing from northern Mali, fusing the traditional melodies and rhythms of the nomadic Tuareg people with Western influences from B.B. King to Bob Marley. Singing in the Tamashek language, their music is a symbol of the Tuareg struggle for an independent sovereign state. Just say the trumpet. I'm trying to be a spokesperson for those without a voice. I sing a lot about my people, our problems, what we've endured for a long time. We're the victims of territorial division. We want autonomy to preserve our identity and language because our culture is disappearing. 
comment on appelle, euh, c'est disparaître. Tamicrest follow in the footsteps of Touareg musicians who have made it onto the world stage. Like Tati and Tinarawen before them, they're determined to keep the music alive, even as their homeland spiraled into turmoil. In 2012, Islamist militant groups swept across the region, crushing a Tuareg uprising and imposing Sharia law, which included a ban on music. Despite a French military intervention to flush out the extremists, the situation in Mali remains fragile and unstable. latest album, Kidal, pays tribute to the flashpoint Malian city of the same name. The record was a labour of love. I devoted a lot of time to making this album. To reflect the real situation, I had to live it. Therefore, I spent nearly two years in the desert. With Mali's musical heritage under threat, Tamacrest are taking their brand of desert blues to audiences around the globe. Making sure their message of defiance and hope is heard through the band's powerful, visceral performances. Next in its eight-decade history, the Tehran Symphony Orchestra has ridden out some turbulent events, a coup that overthrew the Prime Minister in the 50s, the Islamic Revolution and a war with Iraq. It was even silenced for some years under Iran's previous president, the hardline Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. But for the past few years, it's been rising from the ashes. This week, the all-Iranian group performed in French for the first time in a decade. It was under the Franco-Iranian conductor, Payman Memalzadeh, Reza Sayar reports. The Tehran Symphony Orchestra delights the audience with the music of French composer Gabriel Fauré. But perhaps no one is more thrilled to be here than guest conductor Pejman Memarzadeh. For me, for me, coming back to work with my countrymen, to share this European music, it's truly a great joy. Memarzadeh and his family left Iran for Paris in 1978, right before the Islamic Revolution. His love of classical music and decades of studying made him a rising star in France, where in 1995 he founded his own orchestra. But never, he says, did he lose his love for Iran. I have two homes. Today my home is in France, but I'm attached to this city too. I need to come back here. Iranian maestro Shahdad Rohani, the head of the Tehran Symphony Orchestra, invited Mehmar Zadeh to be guest conductor. I would like the world to know that these things are happening in Iran. Memar Zadeh shared his wealth of knowledge with an orchestra whose average age is 25. Uh, he's very passionate and he, uh, he's very sensitive on, uh, on his work. Being a guest conductor wasn't easy for Memar Zadeh. He only had four rehearsals to get the Tehran Symphony Orchestra ready, and sometimes those rehearsals included French lessons. Persian is an Indo-European language. It's not unnatural for an Iranian mouth to pronounce the French language. Memar Zadeh says collaborations like this show the true image of Iran and how music can bring cultures together. Now let's go on a journey to discover the Islamic treasures of Africa. That's the name of an exhibition at Paris's Arab World Institute. It shines a light on the rich cultural footprints left by the religion across the continent from Dakar to Zanzibar. Alexander Alcott reports now. They are the treasures of Timbuktu. It's the first time these centuries-old manuscripts have been exhibited in France. The show features almost 300 pieces that retrace the history of Islam and Africa. From Ethiopia and Kenya to Morocco, this exhibition is an opportunity for dozens of artists to express their spirituality. I was touched by Arabic writing. In Senegal, we study the Quran at school from an early age. We learn the verses and the surah 
So this relationship to the graphic element is extremely important. With canvases, crafts, jewellery and traditional outfits, you can visit many different cultures through the centuries. It's an opportunity to raise the veil on African Islamic art, often misunderstood by the general public. The idea is also born of an urgency. Today in France and elsewhere, the prejudices against Africa and Islam have been increasing, and the situation in certain African countries questions centuries of peaceful and tolerant Islamic traditions. As well as providing a window into Islam, the pieces can also convey a political message. These artworks by Abu Bakr Traore denounce the indoctrination of young people by Islamic extremists. The curators hope the treasures will make visitors leave with a new perspective of Africa and Islam. We're going to leave you now with A Feast for the Eyes. An exhibition at Paris's Grand Palais takes you on a tour of India's crown jewels. From the Great Muggles to the Maharajas, jewels from the Al Thani collection is on until June. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>